Hello, uh, my name is Marty Windle. I'd like to welcome you to our latest YouTube presentation. What we're going to talk about in this presentation is going to talk about my good friend, the examiner, Steve Skidmore. I met him at the teachers' conference, uh, March 2011. We had a conversation about the P3 examination. This uh, presentation focuses on what Steve said about the P3 examination. Now, the first thing uh, is, at the teachers' conference, it's an opportunity for us lecturers. We get to meet the, the examiners, we get to talk to the examiners, and what we're hoping for is an inside track, trying to get, trying to get some inside information on what's coming up in the P3 examination. Now, the first thing Steve talked about was this business forecasting. He put it on the pilot paper. There's a new pilot paper for P3. A new pilot paper for P3. Business forecasting, a big spreadsheet. The good news is on business forecasting. What Steve said was, you are not required to do any calculation for the business forecasting. You don't have to do the calculation. What you must be able to do is to interpret the spreadsheet. Interpret the spreadsheet. What do the columns mean? And in particular, how was the forecast arrived at? So for forecasting, moving averages, you don't have to do any calculation. What Steve said is you must be able to interpret the spreadsheet in terms of how the forecast was delivered. While I, while I spoke to Steve, he particularly emphasised the importance of life cycle costing. Now what he talked about was, he said students must know the difference between the costing of a life cycle in a manufacturing industry, and he particularly emphasised how this will differ to, to the life cycle in a software business. So you've got to look at how the cost behaviour changes in a manufacturing business in comparison to a software business. Very hot for the examination. Also, big new topic, Steve emphasised pricing is now an important issue for the P3 examination. What you need to be able to do is to focus on the factors that influence pricing. You've got to be able to know the factors that influence in pricing. Steve showed me the book on marketing that he was using. I've got a copy of that book and I've built that into my notes and revision material. You've got to know what are the factors that influence pricing and how to set a pricing policy for the organisation. It's in my notes, it's also in my revision mind maps. Project management. You know Steve, it's always been a favourite, project management. But what he said to me is, project management, we're going to increase the amount of project management. He's added a significant amount of extra information that can now be examined. In particular, he said, he's going to emphasise four key areas. Nature of projects, business case, post-project review and benefits realisation. In terms of business case, you must know, he mentioned specifically four key benefits in project management that you need to know. Financial, quantifiable, observable and measurable. You need to know what they are, what's the difference and how to calculate these areas. Also, Steve emphasised more mathematics will now be included in the P3 examination, especially budgeting, budgeting, variances, some basic calculation may be required, but you must know how to comment on your variances, how to comment on the variances. Standard costing, how to do all your material, price and usage variances, it's now included, but also, importantly, commentary. Steve emphasised the focus will be on commentary rather than pure calculation. Expected values and make or buy, basic mathematical techniques are required for the exam. This is new for the examination. He also mentioned on previous exams there were areas where students did not perform well. Two in particular, business process change. Students were weak on this area and project management. What he said was those weak areas, business process change, project management, are more likely to be examined in future examinations because students were weak in those areas. Now, 
In terms of exam technique, Steve shared with me some inside information on how the exam is marked. He gave an example from, uh, uh, to me of two uh, scripts submitted during the examination, and he has allowed me to use those scripts. I'd like to thank Steve for giving me permission to use those scripts. Now, the question was about Pestel. The first answer you can see here is a fail answer. It's a failure. Only uh, three marks were given. Even though the student wrote a lot, only three marks were given in the exam. The next one is an example of a good script. Best practice. A past script. For this script, we can see seven marks were allocated. So Steve said, this is a difference between a bad script and a good script. Certain things we should take note of. First one, he talked about the Pestel model. I'm sure you're all very familiar with it. Half a mark, political. Only half a mark. When they wrote this line, very brief. Not linked to the case. Too general. Only worth half a mark. But if you change it and expand it, make it relevant to the case, always link back to the story. That's what Steve Skidmore wants you to do. Link it back to the case. Link it back to the case, half a mark becomes one mark. Every mark must apply back to the case. Economic, half mark, what's wrong with it? Too brief, just a few words, not enough depth, not linked to the case. Two marks here, you can see the difference more linked to the case. Extra mark because you gave a relevant example. Examples are very important for this examination. You must always focus on the examples. Longer explanation, link back to the case and examples. Now, Steve said to me three key areas. If you're a student studying for the P3 exam, he mentioned three specific things. First of all, link the answer back to the case. Always examples. Link, make your point, expand your point by adding examples in the exam. Link your examples back to the case. Good exam technique. Time management, very important. Complete the exam on time. Complete all the questions. Now, if you want to increase your chance of passing, why not come on my revision course in uh, this year? Come on my revision course, I guarantee you it will give you extra marks in the examination. Between 5 and 10, I guarantee you the revision course I teach will give you between 5 and 10 marks in the exam. We give you the mind maps, my famous mind maps, which will help you to pass your exam. And I've got a mock exam based on the tips. It should be exactly the same or very similar to the real exam. You'll get that if you come on my revision course. Now, as a special at the moment, FTMS, Singapore is offering a 50% discount for anybody who clicks like on their Facebook page will get a 50% discount on the intensive revision course. It's an absolute bargain. I strongly recommend that you would sign up for the revision course. Thank you very much.